The question is that the motion be agreed to, and I give the call to the member for Dunkley. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, as with my colleagues, I'm incredibly proud to be part of a government and a parliament that is introducing this uh, code and looking to implement all of the recommendations of the Set the Standard report. But I have to be honest, I'm also ashamed and pretty perplexed that we had to do it in the first place. Um, it is extraordinary, really, that we had to have the Sex Discrimination Commissioner do an inquiry into the way people have been treated in political offices and in this parliament and then uncover the extent of the horrendous experiences that people have had. It reflects shame on people that have worked here over the, I think, decades that some of those complaints that are in Kate Jenkins' report cover. It also reflects this, and I think we have to be really frank and honest about it, it reflects gender inequality and power imbalance. Um, not all of the complaints or the experiences were from women where the horrendous, bad and illegal behaviour was undertaken by men. Not all of them were, but predominantly they were. And let's be honest about it, it arises most frequently in circumstances where the man is in a position of power and the woman isn't. And I think that's why when this motion was spoken to in the main chamber, almost all of the speakers, who coincidentally were men, um, emphasised the number of women that are now in this parliament and the number of women that are now in their parties. Um, I think only one of them, being the Prime Minister, could actually stand up there and say with great authenticity um, that he is the leader of a party which has gender e equality in the party room. Um, and that all of them should be that lead parties where women are now almost equally represented should be proud of that. And we're proud of that. And it makes a difference. But it's not enough. Like, we have to acknowledge in this conversation that what has occurred in this place and what occurs across Australia is behaviour by men towards women, which is about an abuse of power or authority or control, which at its heart comes from gender inequality and outdated, wrong stereotypes about the roles of men and women and their relative places in society. And what I want to put on the record as part of this speech, and I would like men in authority in this place and in this chamber to listen and hear this message. Women are not inherently vulnerable. We are not fragile creatures that are asking for protection from men. We don't want protection, we want respect and we want equality. And it is well-intentioned, I know, when men talk about protecting women from violence and sexual assault. We don't want to be protected, we want it to stop. And the way it's going to stop is to continue on the path that we are on, thankfully, of understanding that women are autonomous, strong, courageous, flawed individuals that deserve respect and equality in the same way as any man does. 
And when we get there, then hopefully we aren't going to need codes of behaviour. You know, when we get there, hopefully we're not going to need to give speeches over and over again about not abusing power and influence or authority because people that have them will be both men and women and people that have those positions of power, influence or authority will inherently treat everyone who works for them or with them with the respect that you give to someone who you consider to be another human being, simply that. Not someone who you consider to be your equal because others aren't, or someone that you consider to be someone that you need to protect because they're a bit vulnerable, or not someone that you consider to be your superior that you need their approval, just someone that you consider to be another human being who therefore deserves your respect and is equal. So it is just great, I guess that's a word for it, it's just great that we are now going to have a code of conduct. Um, and I join with others who have said, and I said this, I think, perhaps when all of the scandals in this place broke years ago that led to this inquiry happening, I agree with others who say we should have an independent um, body that can investigate and review um, allegations against members of this place and that there should be the ability to recommend sanctions. I and mean, we can look at other models around the world. Ultimately, the parliament, as a group of individual parliamentarians, not as members of parties and governments and oppositions, but as an individual parliamentarians, I think should take on the responsibility of receiving reports from an independent body about allegations of um, improper, illegal or unacceptable behaviour and voting on what we think should happen to the person who has been found to have committed them. Because if we're going to set the standard and have a code, then I think we also have to commit to upholding it ourselves, not just in our individual lives, but in relation to the other people, our colleagues, who are in this place. So the Commonwealth Parliamentary Workplace Guidelines say that people must behave towards each other with respectfully, professionally and with integrity. And if anyone needed to be told that, it's not clear to me what they're doing here. But that's what we have to do. We have to act respectfully, professionally and with integrity. Encourage and value diverse perspectives and recognise the importance of a free exchange of ideas. And I think that this next one is absolutely crucial. And again, it really warrants reflecting of why it has to be said. Recognise your power, influence or authority and do not abuse them. Treat the people that you work with even when you're their boss, as your colleagues. Treat them as people with their own personalities, their own positives, their own challenges, their own skills and attributes. Treat them as people. Recognise that you have power, influence and authority over the people that you work with, who are in your office, who are in this place and don't abuse it. It's as simple as that. <coughs> and everything else that's in this, which I don't need to read out because other people have, is fundamental to how we should all just conduct ourselves as people. So I just want to finish a bit where I started, is that until we get to a place of gender equality, where men and women recognise each other as different but equals, and when there are as many women in positions of power as there are men, when staff, are young men and young women, old men and old women, people from diverse backgrounds, but who all work together, because this is a magnificent place to work and an important mission, and treat each other as people, 
that's when hopefully we're not going to need any codes of conduct anymore. Thank you.